more to jinx it. Oh no, Jake, we just heard like some, I don't know, it feels like a growl. Don't come in, I'm naked. It's me, the Sasquatch. Give me all your food. Welcome back everybody. My name's Ricky, this is Brian. Together we're ETFW, and tonight we're in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> Now, all jokes aside, guys, tonight we're in the Pilliga, or the Pilliga Scrub, to be exact. As you guys saw in our last episode, we ventured seven and a half hours from Sydney all the way down to the Pilliga Scrub from one of our subscribers who suggested this place to us. That's right. And yeah, we're gonna be spending the next 24 hours here. As you guys saw in our last episode, we set up our camp, had a little bit of a walk around, even though it's all pretty much just bush and, you know, bush here. Yeah, there's nothing. <laughs> there's not really much here. But tonight, we're gonna jump into a bit of an investigation. We're gonna give you guys a little bit more history on this place, and in particular, some of the spirits who believe to lurk here or yeah, to haunt the place some of the urban legends and some of the myths that surround this you know this entire forest yeah that's right so with that said we're going to roll a bit of the history but before we do honestly it's starting to sound like a broken record but we're going to be running out of names if you guys aren't subscribing Jarlsberg Why well, have you subject, man? Come on, Jarlsberg. Jarlsberg. Look, I don't know what it's like over in Sweden, but I know you guys got subscribe buttons, okay? So if you got that subscribe button, it's the big red thing that looks like this. It's, I'll put it up on the screen somewhere. Jarlsberg, hit the subscribe button. Stop playing around, man. We want to help you out. We want you to see the videos every time you log into YouTube, and we want you to join the family, man. That's right. Join the ETFW family. That's so right. many people have. It helps us out. Make sure you give a thumbs up. Make sure you comment, but most importantly, subscribe. With that said, guys, we're going to roll into the history fill you guys in on some of the stories of this place. And with that said, let's roll the history. Let's stop blabbering on. Let's show you guys what we're doing. Let's Stop. get into it. Deep in the heart of North Central New South Wales lays a forest spanning over 5,000 kilometers. This dense bushland is known for its scenic tracks, wildlife, and most of all, its terrors, which are rumored to lurk within. To begin the story of the Pilliga Scrub, I must take you all back to the native Aboriginal people who roamed this land long before we did. The natives tell of stories, stories of evil entities, which are rumored to lurk within this dense forest. Believe what you will about the legends, although those very stories were enough to keep clear the native Aboriginal people from the Pilliga scrub who refused to enter, instead traveling around the scrub entirely. Fast forward many years and the stories of the Pilliga scrub seem to multiply. Campers reporting on strange happenings, truck drivers reporting on unusual sights, and locals heeding the warnings from the natives and steering clear those who wish to venture in. As I mentioned, the Pilliga is rumored to be inhabited by an evil presence. Over the years, there are two stories in particular which lend credence to this. The first is the Pilliga Princess. In 1993, Claire Whipson, a homeless Aboriginal woman, was struck by a truck driver in the late hours of the night. Unfortunately, she did not survive the accident. What is unsettling though is the official report and stories that follow after her death. Claire Whipson was a known homeless woman who lived around the Pilliga Scrub. She was known to walk up and down the Noel Highway, pushing a shopping trolley with her belongings. She would often try to hitch rides with truck drivers who passed by and, over the many years, granted herself the nickname, the Pilliga Princess. As mentioned, in 1993, she was struck down by a truck driver crossing through the highway. The report states that Claire Whipson turned towards the truck, arms outstretched in a hugging gesture, and ran towards the truck. Other truck drivers over the years after her death have made reports of seeing a similar looking lady wandering up and down the highway through the day and night. She was also believed to be one of the only Aboriginals who would freely enter the Pilliga scrub. Could she have known the secrets of what haunts the forest? The second story, which seems far-fetched, is that of Australian urban legend Legend, the Yowie. The Yowie, similar to the Sasquatch or Bakwas, depending on where you live in the world, is believed to be a large humanoid looking creature. We are not too sure where the stories originated from, although the Pilliga scrub has gained a reputation amongst Yowie hunters, and the reports flow into the dozens. All speak of a large creature which lurks in the woods and feeds on unsuspecting campers or those who travel into the scrub. As we mentioned, the stories of Yowie seems far-fetched, but could they have also been the evil that the native Aboriginal spoke of? With all these stories, we decided to head out to the Pilliga and stay overnight, attempting to deduce if the stories are true. We are ETFW. Follow us as we explore Pilliga Scrub. Alrighty guys, as Ricky mentioned, we're right in the middle of Pilliga itself, the heartland of Pilliga in the scrub itself. Now, 
As we said, the area is supposedly haunted by a spirit called the Pilliga Princess. Now, as you guys saw in the history that Ricky gave you about the Pilliga Princess, she's said to not only roam the main road, it's also said that she roams the side streets, the off roads from that main street. Now, as I'll show you right now, which you guys can't really see. <laughs> yeah, it's so difficult to see. Yeah, it's really dark, but we've in the middle of a crossroad when it focuses. So we're right in the middle of a crossroad. And over there. So we just walked about 30 minutes away from our site to be able to get to this exact location. It's probably the most logical one out of all of them. It just off the road itself. Yeah. I mean, who knows? Again, as we've mentioned before in the first episode, there's no particular spots in the Pilliga scrub itself that are more or less haunted than the other. It's yeah. the whole entire area itself. And again, as we mentioned in the history, the native Aboriginal people wouldn't even cross through the entire area. They would go around. Which makes it extremely interesting considering that the Pilliga princess is reported to be an Aboriginal woman. She, exactly. I think, is the only one that ever would come in here. At least that's what we read online. So who knows, maybe she was contacting those sorts of dark spirits. Maybe she was, maybe, maybe she was into like some witch doctor sort of voodoo. I don't know, like call it far fetched, but I guess that's what we're going to find out. That's right. I guess that's, that's the point of being uh, in this paranormal industry is that you need to make speculations and, and assumptions because there's no real way of being hundred percent sure. Exactly. That said, we're going to jump into a dowsing rod session. Let's see if we can contact her. So the dowsing rods always seem to work extremely well for us. I mean, we always get great responses with them. You know, let's see. I think tonight we're already packing shit a little bit yeah. in the middle of the woods alone. So, I mean, we don't want to f around with, <laughs> you know, other things we're not comfortable with. Let's stick to what we know tonight and let's see if we can contact the Pilliga princess and see why she haunts this place. Maybe it's not even dangerous. Maybe it's just folklore. Maybe. Let's do it. Let's find out. Alrighty guys, so we've got Paralys running. Not gonna lie, I kind of definitely feel a bit vulnerable just standing in the middle of this crossways a little bit, but I can't see a thing by the way. Like I've got the light in my eyes, I can't see anything. So Brendan's kind of my eyes and ears right now. Got your back. Alrighty, again, it's a dead still night, no wind, no interference. So if there are any spirits here tonight that would like to communicate, my name is Ricky, here with my friend Brendan. Gonna be staying the night. Just like to communicate and find out why this area is believed to be as haunted as people say it is. If there is anything here with us tonight, any spirits, are you able to move both dowsing rods to my far left hand side? Again, if there are any spirits here with us tonight, are you able to point both dowsing rods to my far Salvation. to my far left hand side? Active man. That was quick. Thank you to the spirit who moved the dowsing rods. Can I ask, am I speaking to a female spirit or am I speaking to a male spirit? If I'm speaking to a female spirit, Note. If I'm speaking to a female spirit, are you able to move both dowsing rods to my far right? Please. Please? Sorry if we forgot our manners. It's male. Yeah, crossing. Thank you very much. So the male spirit that I'm communicating to, are you by any chance a native Aboriginal? Are you of the land? Did you once inhabit this land, the land surrounding this area? If so, can you move both rods to my far right hand side? If not, you can move them both to my left. To the spirit that I'm communicating to, to the male spirit I'm communicating to, if you are not of the land, if you are not Aboriginal, are you able to move the rod? Alrighty guys, so I don't know that the last clip kind of cut out, but brand new battery, completely full, just completely shut off. So again, we just went and swapped out the battery real quick. We put a fresh battery in, but yeah, I don't know, that hasn't happened for a while. No. So it was a male spirit that we're speaking to. So to the male spirit that I'm communicating with, you mentioned that you weren't of the land. Can I ask, did you perhaps die here? Is that why your spirit lingers here? If so, are you able to move the rods to my far right hand side? If you inhabited this land from many, many years ago, are you able to cross the rods in front of me? Afraid. Afraid? There's no need to be afraid, my friend. We're, we're friendly people, we're friendly guys. We really just want to know your story and know if the stories are true here. So it inhabited this land for a long, long time. 
Can I ask, there is a legend that the Aboriginal native people said that there was an evil, dark spirit that haunted this area, this forest, these lands. Are we speaking to you? Is that, is that you? If so, are you able to move the rods to my far left? That was quick. That was quick. Yeah. Wait, so ran. Ran. It was afraid, so it ran. I think so. Is what you're saying, are you saying that you were afraid and you ran perhaps to these forests? Did you find salvation here? Did you find safety in these forests? Is that why your spirit still lingers here? If you... Nathan. Huh? Nathan. You've given us a few names through our powerless device, one of the names being Nathan. Is that your name? If it is, you're able to cross the rods in front of me? Thank you very much, Thanks. Nathan. Did that just say yes? That's advice. Nathan, are you here with us right now, close by? Are you able to point the rods to your direction if you are? Point both tips of the rods to where you are if you are here with us right now, if you are close by. Indeed. Indeed. Next to you. Nathan, again, there's a lot of stories about this place. Stories apparently about you from what we believe from this conversation that you're harmful or you're evil or, you know, to the point where people don't even want to come in here. Are, are you a bit of a trickster? Are you a bit of a evil spirit? Or have they just got the story completely wrong? If they've got the story completely wrong, are you able to point both rods to my left-hand side? So he's not a malevolent spirit. Ask if there is a malevolent spirit in here though. Daniel. Daniel. Getting a lot of names. Yeah. Nathan, can I ask, if you are not the malevolent spirit that people speak of, is there something else that lurks in here? Another evil spirit by any chance? If there is, are you able to cross the rods in front of me? Don't be shy. Don't be scared. something else. Jackson. Here. Another name, Jackson. Is that malevolent entity, spirit or thing, is that here with us tonight? If it is, are you able to point both rods to my right? Nathan. Sacred. Sacred. Are you saying that this is a sacred land? That's what you mean, if this is a, some sort of sacred land, are you able to move both rods to my left? Is that what you're meaning? Are we crossing on sacred land? I'm starting to wonder if the names that are being said, maybe people have like, disappeared or something. Not just that, but like maybe white settlers. Maybe they've died here. Maybe we're communicating with more than just one spirit here. Nathan, can I ask, are we communicating with more than one spirit? If the names are spirits that are trying to communicate with us right now, can you cross the rods in front of me? Or if these are perhaps people who have gone missing in here, people who have died in here, or just other spirits that rest here, are you able to move both rods to my right? Vacation. Huh? Vacation. Vacation? No, vacation. But maybe v she just said it weird. V-A-C-C-A-C-I-O-N. Nathan, can I ask, is there any sort of danger in here tonight? If there is, can you cross both the rods in front of me? That was f***ing quick. Are you able to point both rods to where our camp is set up? I do No, 
that is actually spot on. Oh my god, man. Our camp is literally that way. Dude, that gives me f***ing shivers, man. Well, he, he, he said that there's something evil here. Maybe ask if it's nearby. England. England, nice. England. That's definitely not nearby. No, but maybe those people are from England. Like I said, colonists. Settlers. Nathan, there's rumour of a beast, I guess you'd say. Maybe a spirit. No one's really sure, but goes by the name of a Yowie. There's all sorts of weird reports of it. Is that the evil entity or thing that you speak of? So can you, I'm going to say, cross the rods in front of me? He. 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 Oh my god, man. Ask if it's, like, nearby. Nathan, is it watching us right now? If so, can you point both the rods to where he is? Did I just got f***ing chills, man. Did you just hear that? Yeah. Like a growl? Yeah. I swear, dude, like from over this way somewhere, like behind. And now, yeah, you're not going to focus. Like I'm not even f***ing playing. There we go. Only. Only, huh? only. What? Lonely? Only. I'm freaking out, man. It said it was over there somewhere. Dude, I'm actually freaking out, dude. Nathan, is it a wise idea for us to look for this entity tonight? If we should steer clear of it, can you point the rods to my right? Lamb. Hey? Lamb. Lamb to the slaughter? Leading a lamb to the slaughter? Maybe. You know what I'm saying? Nathan, has this spirit ever revealed itself to anyone? If it has, can you point the rods to my left? There's that story of the guy called Bongo. Bongo. Who got caught yes. Kidnapped. Ask if that's true. Nathan, I have a few more questions for you. Again, thank you for communicating with us tonight. You've been extremely talkative. You seem to know a lot about this land here. Can I ask you, there's a legend of a man named Bongo who was believed to be kidnapped or taken by this Yowie. Is that story true? If so, can you cross the rods in front of me? H. True. F that. Alright, so we know that the bongo store. Alrighty, guys. We were we we're actually going to call the episode there and kind of head back to the tent and kind of just sit down for a little bit and relax and it's getting pretty late but I don't know for our peace of mind we've just gone over to the spot where the dowsing rods pointed where the yaoi was supposed to be I don't know I man I'm just like seeing sh yeah, caught going on my eyes I'd rather like see this place for myself and f see if there's anything here yeah. and confront it now while I'm awake rather than it f coming for us while we're sleeping yeah, so we're over at the spot now where it pointed this is kind of like another little campsite here, but... The focus is wigging out, it's focusing on things that aren't there. I don't know. Again, maybe, maybe, maybe Nathan is, like, maybe Nathan is the Yowie. <laughs> you know, oh, plot twist, like maybe he's f like, yeah, go over there, I'll scare the out of these guys. Well, I'm just myself on the walk back, because you still got like a 30 minute walk back. Yeah, I know. 
but yeah, honestly, I, I, I don't know. I don't know what to take. Sometimes, like, I mean, the last few times, the dad's roads have been so active, man. It's just creepy. Like, it just gives you an eerie feeling. Yeah. You know, considering we're staying the night here, I mean, I'm already freaking out, but, like, yeah. It's like a laughing. Yeah. Like a hee 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 hee. Dude, let's just, let's just yeah. start heading back. We're gonna head back to the campsite. Like I said, it's getting pretty late here. We've been out, you know, all day, all night. I think we're gonna look at calling it quite soon. Maybe do a bit of an investigation and, you know, see if we can communicate with the Yaoi, try a couple of other methods while we're over there. Yeah. But yeah, guys, if you did like this episode, make sure to give it a like, comment, subscribe. We're gonna head back to the tents. We're gonna see, maybe we'll call it a night. Maybe we'll keep, maybe we'll keep investigating and see if we can find anything else here. Yeah, it's cool. Alrighty, guys, we'll catch you on the next episode. Yeah. Peace.